Due to several computer problems, it's now evening, and I believe that uh, the video quality probably is not very good, but uh, I can change it. Okay, so uh, we will now, in the second part uh, of the section on computerized tomography, I will show you how the problem is modeled, mathematically modeled, how we can mathematically uh, describe computerized tomography. The name of uh, what we'll be looking at is the radon transform. Uh, the operator is the radon transform. We're looking at computerized tomography. And what we're actually doing, and you're going to see that, is uh, we're doing parameter estimation for the transport equation. Uh, in a very simple case, how so that boils down to uh, um, analytically solvable um, ordinary differential equations, uh, which can be written down as integrals. And so we have something like integral equations. And you're going to see all that. OK, uh, we'll start off uh, by modeling one single X-ray that travels through my body. So uh, I have an X-ray source located at X0. I have an X-ray detector at position Y0. These are connected by a straight line L. My uh, the uh, the region I'm I'm looking at the, uh, the the basic region I'm looking at is a flat disk through my body. So I restrict myself in all of what we're going to do to just a two-dimensional problem, not the three-dimensional problem we actually have. Okay, so all this is happening in a plane. X, Y is in a plane. Y zero is in a plane, and they're connected by a straight line L. Um, let me note that we neglect that in reality that uh, um, these, this beam is, uh, the, the X-ray is scattered, so it gets wider. Uh, this is something you have to take into account when you process real measurements, but in our model, we'll neglect that and we'll assume that uh, the X-ray travels straight ahead on a line without going. OK, I would like to describe the intensity of the X-ray on this line L. And uh, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't um, in that line L. And so I of X should be the intensity of the X-ray. And of course, X has to be on the line. If, I mean, since it doesn't travel to the sides, the intensity is 0 everywhere. We start off with an initial intensity of the, la uh, of the laser, of the uh, X-ray beam, which is known. So um, we know that at, at the point X0, uh, at uh, the emission point, I of X0 is I0. After the X-ray leaves my body, we assume we are able to measure the X-ray at some point, at, at that point Y0. So uh, on the exit point, the value of uh, the of the uh, of the X-ray beam uh, of the, the intensity of the X-ray beam is R1. Okay, and uh, we want to mathematically describe describe how Y1 is produced by Y0 and the X-ray transport. Obviously, uh, and uh, this is already wrong, so this is great. Obviously, in the beginning, the X-ray has a larger intensity. Oops, has a larger intensity. Nah. Then at the end, so uh, because it travels through my body and is somehow attenuated in there, so uh, we believe that Y0 is larger than Y1. OK, um, to um, model the transport, uh, we look at a very simple problem. And uh, this is, look at this setting over here. Assume that uh, uh, the, uh, the, the ray arrives at some structure, which is here. Let's assume this is a bone or something. And uh, it, uh, before the bone, it has an intensity of i of t. t and after the bone, it will have an intensity of I of T plus H. 
Let's assume that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the material is the same in all of the bone. So the attenuation factors inside the bone are all constant, they're all the same. Further, let's assume that the bone is very thin. So uh, the width h, which I have over here, is thought to be very, very small. OK, so uh, what happens when the x-ray travels through this small structure? Well, the, um, the value of the, uh, the x-ray beam at, at the end, when it exits that structure, is given by the initial value when it comes in. So that's i of t. And it loses some of its strength in there. So, uh, it's clear that uh, that was, will somehow be um, uh, be proportional to i of t. So the more there is, the more will be lost, right? So it should be proportional to i of t. Also, if h is very very small, we would uh, assume that this uh, the, um, the the loss should be proportional to h because then uh, the longer you have to travel through the bone, the more you will lose. And if h is very small, you can easily see well, that's going to be proportional. So the loss of intensity should be given by h times a i of t times some proportionality factor. And that proportionality factor will be large when we have bone, when we be uh, believe that a lot of intensity of the X-ray beam gets lost, and it would be very small in air or even zero in air. You should the, uh, the prop uh, proportionality error um, proportionality factor could be zero uh, if we are looking at air. Okay, so this is something which you have to believe me, right? Um, but I think uh, it's quite obvious that uh, this is not a bad approximation. Now, uh, we do what we always do in modeling. We take the i of t to the left-hand side, divide by h, and we get something like the differential quotient, uh, dif difference quotient i of t plus h minus i of t over h is minus mu of t times i of t, where mu of t is the propor uh, proportionality factor. So it's somehow depicting the strength of the attenuation at this point t over here. Okay, um, now let h tend to zero, then this converges to i prime of eight, of t, i prime of t. And uh, we get the uh, ordinary differential equation, i prime of t is minus mu of t times i of t, where now mu of t uh, is the strength of the loss or the strength of the attenuation at point t here on this line L. Okay, now this is a very, very simple ordinary equation. So we can easily give the solution. The solution is given by i of t equals to e to the minus integral x naught to t mu of s ds times i naught. And uh, it already satisfies uh, the initial value condition i of x zero should be i zero. Okay, uh, and I remind you, mu of t is somehow the attenuation coefficient, uh, the strength of the attenuation at point t inside uh, on the on the way uh, on that line L. Okay, now uh, we measure this, uh, this this beam at the point y naught outside of uh, uh, the body. So um, somehow i naught is given by e to the minus integral from x naught to y naught mu of s ds. Well, if we set the attenuation coefficient to zero everywhere outside of my body, then this is just the line integral over uh, over the line l. And uh, again, we have the attenuation coefficient function mu of s ds times e naught. So this is just t equals to y naught. Now, uh, but uh, this we can uh, now solve for the integral and we get uh, the formula that the integral over L mu of s ds is given by minus the logarithm of i1 over i0. Okay, so what happens? Let's recapitulate. We have an x-ray beam 
with, um, with uh, um, intensity I0, which is known. We measure the uh, strength of the X-ray beam behind my body, and there it is, I1. I form the quotient I1 over I0, take the logarithm and the minus sign, and what that is is the line integral over our over the uh, attenuation coefficient function over the attenuation function mu. Okay, now I remind you that this mu is exactly what we wanted to find, right? I mean, when, if you remember when we looked at the CT image, I said, okay, what this actually is is it shows us the uh, the strength of the attenuation at each point in the body. So um, the mu is what we're going for. Well, it's here a one-dimensional thing, but actually the, if you think of, it, uh, of mu as a two-dimensional function, then this is exactly what we wanted to find. Okay, what does the CT then measure? It measures the line integrals over that function mu. Okay, after some after some dividing, taking the logarithm, what we have here, what, what, the, uh, what the CT device really measures for us is line integrals over the functions that we want to find. Okay, um, it can't do anything more than that. So, but it's quite clear what the inverse problem is now. The CT machine gives us a lot of integrals over lines of a function. And the question is, can we somehow derive the function? So is the function uniquely defined by these lines? And if it is, then find an algorithm that actually gives us these, uh, that actually computes that function. Um, I will, in the third part for computer of arts tomography, I will now look a little bit more on the mathematical definition. So uh, you'll be able to forget about everything about computerized tomography once uh, in the next part of the lecture.